Research serves a purpose, but what the purpose is depends entirely on what's the philosophical orientation or the perspective of the people doing the research. And more to the point, knowledge has different uses depending on what your purpose is. We who are social scientists in the Western tradition come from a very particular tradition that we often don't see as particular. And so I want to kind of open up the conversation about what are different approaches to thinking about what knowledge is for. It's important to point out that science is a way of knowing. It is not an abstract entity that exists apart from culture. It is a culturally specific way of knowing. The word comes from Latin, um, sierre, which means to know, right? It is a form of understanding knowledge. Originally, it started meaning knowledge in the big sense. Um, then it meant knowledge created through a rigorous set of procedures. And now it's used to say this is scientific gathering of knowledge and this isn't. Um, for those of us in political science, kind of one of the key texts in research methods is King Cohen and Verba's Designing Social Inquiry, um, which is a text that some people view as kind of the fundamental text and some people view as the text we're all reacting to. So it's, it's uh, controversial in the way that all key works are. Um, but they use four principles to define what science is for their purposes. They are that the goal is inference, the procedures are public, the conclusions are uncertain, and the content is the method. That last one is confusing, but essentially it means that if you are gathering knowledge to explain something that is unknown, that's the goal is inference. If you are explaining clearly how you did it, that's the procedures are public. And if you are legitimately unsure when you start your research what the result will be, that's uh, the, con the conclusions are uncertain, then that's science, right? Science is the process by which you come to know things. And King Cohen and Verba are very clear that um, this is the uh, type of information political scientists want, right? This is good information from their point of view. Is it collected scientifically? You'll also notice that that kind of framing of science doesn't make a distinction between the social sciences and the natural sciences, right? It's all science, that's fine. But one of the problems with having a discourse around science that has become coterminous with the right way you get knowledge, right? Is that in fact, since this is a culturally specific practice of knowledge generation, there's tons of stuff that's not present in it right? Um, it's grounded in a positivist epistemology, right? Because science works under the assumption that the world can be known through objective knowledge of it, and that we can directly perceive and measure the world, right? It also basically runs on the assumption that the world is objectively present and distinct from what we think of it, right? That's the positivist ontology. Um, and in fact, science as we can still see the repercussions of in contemporary Western culture is about distinguishing what is scientific knowledge from what is religious belief, right? The, we cannot measure the realm of the spiritual, therefore it cannot be subject to science. And this has produced the kind of science versus religion binary that's at the heart of a lot of contemporary uh, cultural conflict in the West. Um, science is also through its orientation, non-normative. Right? It doesn't matter if you're studying radioactivity to create radiation therapy or if you're building a nuclear weapon. It doesn't matter if you're trying to understand plant biology to support logging or conservation. It doesn't matter if you're studying elections and if the results of your studying elections is that governments will learn how to suppress people's voice or encourage people's voice. Right? That's just science. If you're studying um, social movements. It doesn't matter if the social movement wants to hurt people or help people, right? You're just trying to understand the thing. The moral question, the normative question is external to the scientific process, right? And science also has a lot of trouble understanding, understanding meaning, right? The fact that people assign meanings to things is challenging for science to overcome, right? I mean, it needs to be overcome from a scientific perspective. I highly encourage you sometime to kind of 
if you ever come across people debating how you construct a survey, right? How do you make sure everybody interprets the questions the same way? How do you make sure this question has the same meaning from person to person? And this is problematic if what you're trying to do is get objective data about what people think, right? Um, this is a big issue. And it's one that science spends a lot of time wrestling with. Now, what are alternatives to a scientific way of thinking about knowledge? And so because science is a culturally specific practice, that means other cultures have different knowledge generation practices, right? That have different, uh, that have different elements and that function differently. And so um, I am by no means an expert on indigenous approaches to knowledge, but I've spent a lot of time reading and researching and we'll read some of that material if you're studying with me. Um, and I really encourage you to do so. I'm going to put some uh, readings in the comments for this one so you can look some things up. Um, but if we're talking about indigenous approaches to knowledge here on Turtle Island, right, the core thing that connects the different traditions, um, we call them philosophical approaches to borrow the Western frame, right, is that they're grounded in a relational epistemology. What does this mean? It means that they're not grounded in an assumption about how the person perceives the world, right? All three of the epistemologies we've taught, the paradigms that I talk about, um, positivism, critical realism, and interpretivism are all framed in how the person perceives the world and can think about it. This one is framed in not that sort of relationship, that dyadic person perceiving the world, but in fact, in assuming that relationships exist between all objects, right? That we are all in relationship to each other. Um, to Turtle Island indigenous perspectives, right? And ways of understanding, it's not just humans that have volition, right? It's not just humans that have purpose, intention on a metaphysical level that have spirit, right? All things living and non-living have this. And so before, you engage or come to know about them, you have to engage in that relationship with that other being, even if that being is a tree, even if that being is a rock, right? You have to have a relationship with it. Or in fact, you already do have a relationship with it. You just need to, to work it out, right? Um, and the knowledge practices in indigenous ways of knowing traditionally are grounded through the passing on of received knowledge, Right, so we pass on the knowledge from one generation to the next. And that knowledge that is being passed on through indigenous oral tradition is generated through iterative knowledge gathering, right? Lots of observation, lots of telling of stories of what happened before. Um, the idea is that a storytelling notion creates an oral tradition that is passed on. And um, even if when it is passed to you, you don't have the full chain of exactly where this came from, right? Instead, you have an understanding that, you know, it's passed through the tradition, right? And what matters most is, is ensuring good relationships. So there's no empirical versus normative distinction, right? Um, if I cut down this tree, it will provide this, these sorts of resources is not distinct from before you cut down this tree, you should ask its permission. Right, so, so looking at thinking of that relationship with the natural world, right? Um, both of those are instinctively part of the same practice of knowledge. And so, kind of one of the sharpest places this is clear is in this question of what's knowledge good for, right? Why do we have knowledge at all? And why do we gather knowledge? Why do we produce scientific knowledge in the Western framework, right? And within the Western scientific tradition, there are two purposes. The first is it is good to understand, right? It is good to know. It is fundamentally human to want to know, right? Um, you could even, if you're trying to look for the deep cultural roots of this principle, think about the Western traditional stories of the Garden of, good and Eden, of, the Garden of Eden, right? Um, human beings have a strong desire to know so much so that they will eat the apple and be condemned right um and in fact reaction to this story produces kind of some of the division between science and religion and the western tradition right because of course that seems like a story about knowledge being bad 
right? But it's, but for science, knowledge is good, right? And we all have that instinctive human compulsion to knowledge. The second purpose is to try to understand how a system works so we can influence it, right? This is uh, what brings us to the obsession with causality with so many parts of, uh, of, of science, right? Um, that we want to be able to do something with it, right? We study how plants work so we can improve our plant growing practices. We study how human relationships work so we can give advice about how much human relationships can work better, right? We want to make new things. We want to fix things. We want to like, we want to get in there and be able to do something. Our knowledge, we have this strong desire to use our knowledge to do something, right? Um, and like make a change, make something happen. With it. And this is not what the purpose of knowledge is in an indigenous relational epistemology, right? That's not what it's for. The purpose of knowledge in an indigenous, indigenous relational epistemology is to maintain relationships, right? We are already all in relationship with each other. It exists prior to our forming the relationship or starting to think about knowledge creation, right? So the good thing here is not the abstract knowing of things, right? The good thing is to know how to maintain that relationship, right? Um, in the book, Braiding Sweetgrass, Kimmerer tells the story of um, uh, people who harvest sweetgrass wanting to understand what's the best way to ensure that we maintain our good relationship with sweetgrass. Is there a means of harvesting that will do better or will be more supportive of maintaining our relationship with the sweetgrass, right? Um, and that's a, that's a purpose of knowledge question, right? The reason we want this knowledge is so we can do this, right? So we need to know how to maintain relationships. We need to be able to distinguish between having a healthy relationship and an unhealthy relationship. And then there's the notion of the good life, right? Which is fundamental to a lot of um, indigenous philosophy on Turtle Island, right? And the idea of a good life is defined by balance, right? We also, Western tradition also has a theory of the good life. Um, and these, these can be used to talk across each other. And it's interesting, it's more philosophical than I'm talking about right now, right? But the idea is that um, ensuring balance, right? We need to know things so that we can ensure balance. And I want to point out that this doesn't make a distinction between I know what time of year I need to tap the trees to make maple syrup, right? Which is technical knowledge, right? Is scientific knowledge in some ways, right? Um, but, and I need to leave tobacco for the tree before I tap it, right? Both of those are an important part of understanding and maintaining the relationship from within an indigenous perspective. And I'm switching here from saying indigenous to indigenous. Indigenous means that it belongs to the indigenous people. This is their philosophical tradition. This is um, kind of different from indigenous community to community, um, but is kind of rooted in their philosophy and it belongs to them, right? Indigenous is a way of saying that all people have access to using some of these ideas, right? These ideas, despite the fact that they are rooted in cultural property, are also ideas that any person can work from, right? Um, and so what researchers who start talking about indigenous paradigms of research do, is they make that, that linguistic switch, right? Because they want to emphasize that any researcher can use an indigenous paradigm. And so what I want to point out here is that something that's missing in the discourse of science is the distinction between what knowledge is for and who knowledge is for, right? Knowledge, whether it's natural scientific, social scientific, or something else, right, doesn't exist apart from humans. We create it, right? Even if we think we're just going out there and recording what happens in the world, like we're recording it, right? Like there, there's a human in the middle of this. Right. And so that raises the question of who research is for. Right. Who can it benefit? Who does it harm? Right. What can we do with it? Are there questions about what we can do with it? Right? What relationships are inherent in the process? And the thing I want to emphasize is that you can have these questions and wrestle with them 
outside of an indigenous perspective, right? You don't need to conduct research in an indigenous lens to have questions about who knowledge is for, right? This is a fundamental political question and it's one that we are very capable of asking. And if you look at uh, people writing about reflexivity in social science research or people writing about ethics in social science research, right? Who is it for is their question too. Right. But I think sometimes it helps to introduce the indigenous perspective because it allows you to uh, start understanding that there is something that Western science isn't traditionally framed about asking. We have to understand that every knowledge practice will have limits because they are human constructions. Right. Um, and one of the questions that we might want to ask the traditional scientific framing, right, is what's missing? How do we start to accommodate these questions, which the Western tradition names as normative? How do we start incorporating these normative questions into social scientific research?